The biggest thing that is happening in the West is settlement. By 1869, there's a transcontinental railroad. People are moving out West. Probably the biggest reason is cheap or free land. Pardon the pun, but land was dirt cheap. This lured a lot of people to places like Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma and Wyoming. And it was not just people who had been living in the United States their entire life. We are talking about immigrants from Europe who are taking advantage of this cheap land and moving here because it is the opportunity of their lifetime as well. Now, as you might imagine, all of this settlement has its consequences. The first Think about what Frederick Jackson Turner said in chapter 17 of your textbook, and that is that the frontier is closing by the 1890s. Now, is he a little bit jumping the gun? Sure. But the basic idea is that more and more people are living in the West. It's not a frontier anymore. It's not unsettled. And that means something. Because for all of U.S. history up until that point, there had been a frontier line. There had been a settlement line, and that's not there anymore. The entire thing is settled. So, something to think about. The second is with the Native Americans. Obviously, this many settlers and farmers and pioneers coming, it's going to cause a problem with the Native Americans, and there's going to be conflicts over who owns the land. And you see just that. In the 1870s, there are a lot of wars between the Native Americans and the settlers, the U.S. Army steps in, and there were debates. What do you do? How do you solve this problem? Nobody wanted wars and fighting and that kind of thing. There were two suggestions. The first is reservations. That's what they've been doing for a long time. The second was the Dawes Severalty Act, which aimed to give each Native American family a plot of land like all of the pioneers. The goal being, you kind of encourage the Native Americans to be farmers, maybe they fit in a little bit more, maybe we can call it good. I'll be interested to see what your thoughts are on that and which method you think will work best. The other thing that the Native Americans face is the near extinction of the buffalo. It's really strange because there were so many herds of buffalo, they were everywhere out in the west and on the plains. And the settlers come in and they start killing the buffalo, not only for food, but also for sport, to sell the skins, to sell the bones, to sell the horns. And by the 1890s, the buffalo were nearly extinct. So it's an interesting problem, not only for the settlers, but for the Native Americans, who depended a lot on buffalo for food and supplies and things like that. Okay, so. Let's talk about the South. The South, one of the major issues in the South is civil rights. If you look at the South by the 1880s and the 1890s, segregation was very much a thing. There were separate train cars, separate everything. And a Supreme Court case, Plessy versus Ferguson, had said that that was perfectly legal. If you wanted to have separate schools, you could, as long as they the schools were equal. And there were two people who were big civil rights leaders in the 1890s, early 1900s, Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois. Booker T. Washington took a more gradual approach, and I think his approach was not to kind of make people angry and work within the system. And Booker T. Washington also pushed for you know, economic success. Do what you can now. Get a job. Get an education that teaches you how to do a trade, that teaches you a skill. Maybe it's blacksmithing, or maybe it's some sort of factory work. Take that, work your way up. And the more you do that, the more likely you can work your way up to things like getting rid of desegregation, getting equal voting rights, that kind of thing. W.E.B. Du Bois disagreed. He said, if you want economic success, then you have to have voting rights and desegregation first. So they had the same goal. They just had different ways of getting there. The other thing the South is dealing with is industrialization. 
they are realizing that they have to catch up to the north and in their attempts to do that the south kind of starts to change so have a look at chapter 17 i look forward to hearing your opinions on these things 